I've been a journalist for more than 50 years now. 10 years as a foreign correspondent in America. And I've been to most places around the world, reporting wars and catastrophes and personalities. Quietly, I was a closet photographer. I've spent my life writing and, and reporting. I get more pleasure from taking photographs than I do from writing words. And I'm reluctant to say it, but it's really true. I'm on Bruni Island, an unpolished jewel below Tasmania. I'm doing a new photographic book using the GFX camera with a 23mm Fujinon lens. And I want to take some environmental portraits, if you like, in this clean green place at the bottom of the earth. And a camera like this and a lens like this, honestly, um, allows me to be as good as I can be. When you jump on the ferry to come across to Bruni Island, you're conscious that you're coming to a special place. I, I don't think there's any place like this on Earth. It's a timeless, sometimes forgotten piece of paradise when they stopped logging a forest while Malcolm Barnett, the local sawmiller, had to shut up shop. But out of work it didn't mean out of luck for young Malcolm. After all, he lives on Bruni Island. It is a beautiful place here, yeah, peaceful. It's just a nice place to live. Close by, and I mean everything here is close by, Bernice Woolley decided that what Bruni Island needed most was a vineyard with some fine wines. Bernice loves a challenge. This is our Pinot Noir, and we also grow Chardonnay, which are just a little bit further over. And this is the, uh, the furthest south of any vineyard in Australia? Yes, it is. We're Australia's most southern vineyard. Everyone on the island said we're mad. Who would grow grapes on Bruni Island? Well, if you're not living on the edge, you're taking up too much room. <laughs> <laughs> a nice line. <laughs> a nice line. I think there's something about photography that is like a therapy. I think if people um, are suffering from depression or suffering from, uh, you know, insecurities, that to get away on your own with a camera is reassuring. I, I think cameras are great therapy. They make you see the world through a lens. They make you stop and, uh, and try and see shapes and colours and, uh, and pictures. Um, and that's a really healthy thing. I guess all the world's a stage for Austrian-born actor Eustace Newman, who's now almost welcomed as a local. For work, Eustace flies back to Vienna, but for pleasure and some homespun philosophy, well, it's Bruni Island. Eustace, why acting? Why not a real job? You look for meaning in life. When I'm on stage and I open myself to a degree, I feel a connection between the audience and myself. And that satisfies me extremely. Is Eustace on stage the real person? I'd say the more honest person, maybe. Work and life is one. If you can make it one, life and work, you are sort of yourself. If my gift is my life and my work at the same time, well, then I'm fulfilled. Pretend this camera is your audience. I want you to act for this camera. I couldn't ask a businessman to do this or a football player, yeah. but I can ask an actor. A sad clown. Be a, give me a sad clown. Or maybe a grandfather. <laughs> Your grandfather is a license. You're the captain of the Austrian soccer team. You've won the World Cup. That's wonderful. Good. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <come. laughs> There's only one Bruni Island pub where you can get a beer in almost a second or two. It's a warm-hearted gathering place where, on a Friday night, the locals muster to gossip and to giggle and try to win the meat tray raffle. I'll certainly be back for more photos of these colourful characters.